Well, it's definitely an improvement on the earlier text. What we see here, while it doesn't have the words fossil fuel phase out, it still sends a very strong signal that the world is going to be transitioning away from fossil fuels in this critical decade and beyond. Um, so if text like this gets adopted, it's a very significant step. And it's also a huge improvement over the text that we saw a couple of days ago. It's a strong step forward. It definitely does represent a compromise, but undoubtedly what we've seen happen over the last two days is that nations and people who are committed to upholding science and equity have been able to push back against uh, the resistance from petrostates and fossil fuel interests that had diluted the earlier text that we saw. Well, one of the things that's sorely lacking, though, is this text does not have strong provisions for finance for developing countries to make a clean energy transition and close the energy poverty gap. So one can imagine that for many of these countries, it's going to be very challenging uh, to, to agree to texts like this unless richer nations come forward with that finance. So that is still a gap we see in the text here. Um, the initial takeaway is that it's okay in sending a general signal to the world that it needs to deal with fossil fuels in some way. The problem with the text is that it still includes cavernous loopholes that allow the United States and other fossil fuel producing countries to keep going on their expansion of fossil fuels. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's not Paris or Kyoto. Right, it's not Paris or Kyoto. <laughs> We needed a global signal to address fossil fuels. This is the first time in 28 years that countries are forced to deal with fossil fuels. So that, that is a general you know, win, um, but it's, you know, the, the actual details in this are, are severely flawed.